This episode of Scientific Tuesdays is brought to you by Audible.com. Now, a few weeks ago, I was playing with electricity on a Saturday night because it's always been my theory that playing with electricity is often more fun than chasing girls on a Saturday night and also a lot safer. So anyway, what I ended up doing is I figured out how to make my own light bulb at home using just little household items. And I'm going to take you through the steps necessary to do that yourself. Okay, so I'm going to take you through my trials and hopefully cram a little knowledge into your brain in the process. I started off by hitting a local art store and I bought two millimeter thick pencil lead. I then hooked a couple copper wires to it and then a six volt battery. I put the result into a glass jar to help slow down the burning process. You know, less oxygen. And also, just in case the graphite exploded. I don't want to feel like you know, I'm losing an eyeball just for you guys. You know, though I probably would. But always protect yourself. What you're seeing now is what occurred. Now, uh, honestly, what we call a pencil lead isn't really lead at all. It's actually a mix of graphite, clay, and various other materials. Now, graphite can conduct electricity well because of something called electron delocalization. To, uh, you know, sort of quickly explain that, it basically means that uh, a lot of the electrons in the graphite are free to move around and will keep a nice flow of electricity going. After my first failed attempt, I decided to up the voltage that I was putting out. I took five C batteries and put them in a series. When you put batteries in a series, you're essentially adding more voltage for each battery that you add. Since one C battery is 1.5 volts, then five of them together equals 7.5 volts. Y you got me? Okay, cool. This gave me a better result, but not quite what I was looking for. So I decided to decrease the thickness of the graphite as the next step. In this next test, we're looking at a one millimeter gauged graphite. The result was similar as the first one, but it made me want to add more batteries to the array. Okay, cool. Now we're rocking a full seven batteries. Let's see what happens. Okay, so that was pretty cool but let's take the graphite thickness even lower. This will allow us to conduct electricity even better. So I'm gonna try using a 0.5 millimeter replacement. Okay, these are the kind of thing that you use in your mechanical pencils, so you might have some laying around already. The result was spectacular. Now just so you know, the amount of time the graphite lasted depended on how much voltage I threw at it and also how short the graphite length was itself. But with a little experimentation, you can make a fairly functional light bulb on your own. Now this is just one of those crazy MacGyver tricks to file away in your mind and put it away until an emergency strikes. But it's also a damn cool trick to know how to do. That being said, I'll be back next Tuesday with more random ass science tricks for you. And uh, also make sure you're following me on Twitter. You can find the info down there. Click on it, subscribe, follow, whatever they call it nowadays. And also, I want to thank Audible. Audible.com is the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks. Do you know what that means? That means they're number one. Personally, I've been subscribed to Audible for the last three years. And you know what? My favorite thing is science fiction. And you know why? Because when I'm flying or driving, it just seriously melts the time away. Imagine if you could do that yourself. Head over to audiblepodcast.com slash Tuesdays and get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. When I'm not wrestling the marmot stuck under my trailer, I love hearing all the fancy science wizardry on Scientific Tuesdays. Yeah!